Welcome to the Theater of Magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus Pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed Magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight Madness. Tiger Song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The Theater awaits. G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic and my name is Greg and today we are going to have a look, another look at the Hyper Olympic machine and see if we can actually get this guy going. So what happened since the last video? Well, I couldn't help myself, I, it was bugging me that that cabinet was in the corner and just not working and I was, you know, getting that picture and it's not sinking. So I went and this was late at night again, I took, I took the cabinet out, I looked at the sink cable again, it was really bothering me that, that sink cable, so I ended up re-soldering it again just to see if it would make any difference, and it didn't. It made no difference at all. Uh, so I did a continuity test um, to make sure that the sink was going from the board to the monitor, and it was. Uh, so then I thought, well, Okay, what happens, and, and, I, and by the way, I, I really adjusted the, um, the horizontal and vertical uh, holds, and, and I almost sort of got a, a, a picture. I could see the running man in the, uh, on the screen. So uh, the good news is, uh, you know, I think the board's booting. I mean, it might have other issues. I don't know until I see the proper picture, but it looks promising from that point of view. So I got it close, but clearly no we're near stabilized so then i thought well hang on what if i just disconnect the sink altogether am i going to get the same result because that might tell me something so i did that i took the sink desoldered it completely and sure enough it, it was exactly the same so it's definitely not getting sync now either from the board the board might not be sending out sync which is going to be a problem uh or the chassis stuffed and it needs repairing so I thought, well, we've, you know, I'm going to have to do one or the other, and really the chassis is probably a good place to start, at least to get that checked out by uh, Joey at Jomac. So I took the, the chassis out, and immediately uh, I noticed a few things. So the first thing, when I took that monitor out, by the way, and I did the, you know, the grounding method, wow, that gave a massive crack. <laughs> the other monitors, I think, tend to uh, dissipate. Um, their energy you know automatically but you know it's a lot of the older ones just don't don't do that you should always do the check anyway but it took me a little bit by surprise in fact I got a first big crack and I sort of you know pulled the screwdriver back and then when I put the screwdriver in again I got a secondary crack so it just goes to show you really want to do it a few times make sure the electricity is out of there so anyway um, when I was actually taking the anode cap off with that screwdriver, I did notice it seemed like it was like really on there, really stuck, like it had never come off before. And so that got me wondering, maybe the chassis hasn't been serviced at all in its lifetime, which, you know, would mean that more than likely there's stuff stuffed on it. So I got the chassis out and, you know, and again, all the screws and everything really felt like they'd never been, you know, turned once. So... Uh, I really do feel like it was, yeah, just an, a, an original chassis. And when I turned it over, I found this capacitor on the back, and I thought, what the hell was this? Like some bodgy job. And I thought, oh, maybe someone's done some repairs here. And that's what I initially thought, and it was cracked as well. So clearly there was a problem straight away. That cap was cracked. And um, yeah, it turns out, actually, after Joey had looked at it, he actually said to me, it was not common but sometimes manufacturers when they were actually creating the boards they'd have a, like a, a change to the board layout uh, and they'd need to add another part late in the in the design process and in this case just couldn't squeeze the cap in on through the top with with all the other components so they would just fit it underneath the board so it was actually a manufacturer uh, change to the board so if you see one of those yeah it's not not a hack <laughs> which was something always good to learn um, the other thing I did, and I made a bit of a rookie mistake, um, quite funny really, looking back on it, but I tested the fuses and 
when I tested one of the fuses, it, it, it gave me nothing. I tested the other ones and it was good, and this particular one gave me nothing. So I thought, well, there's a fuse gone as well. So with the crack cap and the fuse, I thought, oh, it's definitely got issues. But it, as it turns out, <laughs> that fuse was actually fine. But because of the corrosion that it just you know built up on it, I wasn't getting good contact with the motor meter. So look out for that one, guys. That can get you. Um, so that fuse was fine. However, Joey said that when he went through the board, it was, yeah, it was a mess in terms of, it was basically a full cap kit. Everything had to be changed on it. Um, in fact, the one of the main capacitors, he said, was, was almost hollow. <laughs> it was that bad. It was amazing that it even actually struck up a picture, to be honest. So he's fixed all that, and I've got that board back. See here, I don't know if you can see the nice new shiny caps that are on there and that one at the back is all nicely fixed up now so yeah so i have a working chassis and the other thing i i did while that was being done is i just did a little a little bit of research on the board not a huge amount on the hyper olympic board and here's a few things that i found out about the one that we have so the first thing is is that uh it's a bootleg uh and that's because it doesn't have konami written on it anywhere and so I strongly suspect that that's the case. The other thing is, is that this top board here is the soundboard, and I believe that the amplifier is this little guy here. And on the real Konami boards, that's actually got a heat sink, a really large heat sink on it, which is why it's got that big square area that's uh, free there. It's normally got a massive heat sink. And of course, this doesn't have it. So there is a possibility that that's gone bad and might have overheated and, and failed, um, which would be a, you know potentially a swap out of that. Or it could be a number of these chips. I did see a couple of other repair videos and, uh, and a few ICs needed to be changed over, weren't socketed properly. So I don't know, I, and I'm hoping that that's not the case in terms of getting the sound going. Um, but if that is the, the case, then we're going to have to deal with that in some way. Now, the other thing that I noticed on here, of course, is that it's got its own uh, volume pot on the board. And we were adjusting or attempting to adjust the volume with the little volume knob in the inside of the cabinet. Now, I strongly suspect that that volume knob was for the original Defender cab which may have, and I'm just guessing here, but it may have a separate amplifier board and then that would have gone off to the amplifier board and, and done the volume on that. So it's probably not connected at all. I, have, I haven't actually looked at it. So anyway, this was set at, um, I don't know, probably 10%. Um, so who knows, maybe it wasn't loud enough. I mean, I have credited the machine up and believe had a game start and I should have heard sound then. I may not have heard sound during the... the um, the attract stage because the dip switches may not have been set up for sound and I did have a quick look at those and I know that one of those I can change over for that. So yeah, I'm not sure about the sound yet guys. I mean, I'm getting a hum, uh, which sort of, I don't know, I would have thought that would indicate that perhaps the amplification is working, but it's just not getting sound from the chips. Don't know. So that is still a mystery, but quite frankly, if we get a picture up, and, uh, and if the controls work, we can play a game. That'll be a great win to start with. And then we can, of course, uh, battle out and find the, the sound issue. Now, one other thing with this board, which I found and when I took it apart, was that it has a place for the battery to save all those high scores. And that's what we want from this board. But there's no battery. There's no battery holder. So uh, we're not going to have be saved on anything at the moment until I um, source the appropriate uh, battery holder uh, and, and get a battery in there. So that was, uh, that was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I guess in some ways it's a good thing because it's not a failed battery, so we don't have any leakage or anything on, the, on these boards. And these boards do look relatively good. I mean, they look, I'm not going to say new, um, but they're very, very clean. But I guess it doesn't really say anything. You know, old solder been going on and off for years and years can slowly, you know, wear itself thin and um, start losing contact. And the just expansion and contraction of the board, you know, with heat and cold can cause all sorts of issues. So who knows? But anyway, we are ready to stick this back in and uh, get that 
uh, monitor chassis in and switch it on and see if it works. Right, we need to get the chassis again, just do the earth on the anode just to be sure. Um, it has been discharged before, but it's just good habit to get into. Left hand in the pocket, rubber shoes on, and just make sure we're not. Oh, look at that. Did you see that? There was just a little nick. So it just goes to show, and I've heard this before, that these can start charging up again, even just with the, I think it's like the rotation of the earth. <laughs> it's not really bizarre. Um, but yeah, there was a little bit of charge that just came out of there. So good safety precaution to do that every time you touch a monitor. Okay, now something a little bit different with this mon uh, sh monitor chassis was that there was two earth leads from the monitor itself. Um, normally, I think you have one just going to the neck board, but this one also has a secondary one that goes to the chassis. And interestingly, Joey said that if that second one isn't plugged in, then you'll get a dark picture. So that's something to look out for as well. Now I have taken photos of the orientation of all the other plugs, so we should be able to get that back in correctly. But what I'm going to do now, there was just three screws that came out on the chassis board and at the bottom here, and I'm just going to get that screwed and mounted back up onto the wood plate. Okay, I'll just talk through what I'm going to do here. So we've got the main uh, power that needs to go into there. We have the uh, degaussing circuit which needs to go over there. We have the main uh, colour signals which go into here. And not sure if it's that way or not, I'll check my photos in a minute. We need to put the, uh, the anode cap back on which will go up here of course and then we need to attach the uh, the neck ward and that will go on the back of the neck and as I said we've got these two cables here so we've got one going to the chassis and one going to the neck board we need to find that one on the chassis Okay guys, I'm just going to test the board just out of the cabinet to start with and let's just see how far we get. Let's plug this in and see what happens. Hmm, a lot of humming. No screen action. That's not good. Okay, have to turn it off. Have a look. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is again maybe that dodgy, dodgy connector. So let me just check that and then we'll give it another go. Uh, that connector is really needs just to be redone. It just doesn't even really sit on there properly on the edge connector, so probably wasn't getting its five volts properly. <laughs> Let's see what happens. We got nothing, guys. We've got nothing. I'll have another check of the connections and see how we go. Try again. You can get audio hum that time. 
Hmm. Not good. We got nothing. Right, so what just happened? Well, <laughs> I left it. It is another day and I had to sit and think about it for a while to figure out what was going on. There's nothing worse than, you know, trying to fix something up and then going backwards. <laughs> I had the monitor going beforehand, now I had nothing. And in fact, I had, of course, the game board was at least powering up with the sound. I mean, well, not the sound, but you could hear the amplification the first couple of tries and then on the last try I didn't even get that. So I don't know, have I blown the board up? I hope not. Um, you know, that chassis, there should be nothing wrong with that. I, I you know, I trust that's come back perfectly fine from Joe Mac. What I, what I think has happened is that the, the wiring is a mess. And to be quite honest, I probably shouldn't have shouldn't have carried on with the wiring in the state that it was you know all the the ends of the uh, on the connector where the cables are coming into the connector there you know there's no uh, there's no shielding there's no heat heat shrink around those connectors so and i and i you know and i moved the board slightly and you know changed the angle of that connector and, and i think it's quite easy for those wires to fray and given the soldering pretty poor of them anyway and just you know arc across I may have shorted something out, guys. I may have blown a fuse on the power supply. I don't know. What I thought I would, and of course, you know, obviously I can check that, but I thought, well, I need to reassess what I'm doing here because it's very difficult to understand what's going on. Now I've got potentially, you know, three things that are wrong. Is it the monitor? Is it the, you know, is it the chassis on the monitor? Is it the power supply that's failed and why did that supply well, is it the cabling is it the pcb and, and who knows <laughs> any one of those things right um but i strongly suspect that the wiring has caused my test to fail so what i thought i'd do is i had on order anyway a uh jammer converter for the konami classic uh pcbs and so this shares uh, pinouts with other games such as Gyrus, for example, because it also actually supports, if you look on here, actually supports a uh, the Gyrus stereo connection um, for, the, for the stereo. I didn't actually realise Gyrus had a stereo sound, so there you go. It's a fairly early game to have stereo, but anyway. So you can connect that up and get uh, for, your, for your stereo sound. And it's also got a little connector on here for uh, minus five volts. If you've got a board that requires minus five or not, if you don't need the minus five, you just take that jumper off. But other than those two little things, this is effectively a plug and play. Plug this into your board, plug it then into a jam, any jammer connector, any jammer machine, and it should run. So I can really use this right now and test the board and test it in the Astro City, which of course is set up for a, for a standard jammer. So that will at least allow me to understand if I've blown the board up or not. Let's hope not. Um, and also it will allow me to, to see if, the, you know, the original problem that we were having with the video, if it's the board or, you know, has it been fixed now that the chassis is fixed, even though I can't now get that all connected back up. So. Um, but it will at least show us those two things and, let, and let's just hope the board isn't buggered So guys, that's what we're going to do We're going to hook this up to the Astro City and let's see what sort of result we get and Then we can take it from there. Right. Well, we have the board here set up on the floor of the Astro City which you can see is above us here and So yeah, I've just plugged in the converter at the end there and that converter goes straight into the jammer plug. So really useful bit of kit actually. Um, if you've got a, a jammer machine lying around that you know is working and you can just get one of these converters and uh, plug in a Konami classic game and uh, you're good to go. So let's see what happens when we turn this on. As I said, hopefully I haven't damaged the board in my initial test. Don't see anything obvious. There was no magic smoke. So let's uh, turn it on and check it out. Right. So guess what? We actually have, yeah, we have the exact same problem as we had originally. 
so it doesn't look like that uh, we would have solved it even with just the replacement chassis even though there was problems with that chassis that Joey did fix it's not going to solve the original problem that we have here now the other thing is, is I can hear a hum so that's sort of promising as well in that that's what we heard initially from the sound circuits even though there was no sound and I did switch the dip switches I believe I do have it on a track sound and I'm not getting anything so the sound again is a separate issue but we really need to get the screen sorted out so so this throws a bit of a spanner in the works really because now it's likely that it's something on the board that's causing this problem and it'll be part of the sync or the video output uh, the chips responsible for that maybe playing up because I think really the logic of everything else seems to be working okay it is actually scrolling through the attract you can see it going through the different attract screens I took photos before I can see that it's going from the title screen through to the main screen you know again there could be some other little subtle things wrong uh, maybe other some other memory that's at fault but I'm you know I mean I'm not an expert on PCB repair by any means but you know from what I, I know it, it would seem to me that it's, the board's running the logic of the board is running it's just the output and therefore really I need to check the sync output probably put that on a scope and see if it looks okay although I'm not sure what I really need to be looking for to see if it is okay I'm going to have to figure that out and we're going to need a logic probe probably to look at the chips and also the schematic and I know I've looked online for a schematic for this and there's really only one for track and field which I, I mean effectively it should be the same game there's a bit of graphics that have changed I don't know if the schematics are completely different though this is not any schematics for this board it's going to make it very difficult uh, but maybe there's some other Konami boards that have shared sort of video circuits that are done in the same way I'll uh, I'll start that investigation process but I really need a scope and I really need a logic probe and I really need someone that knows what they're doing okay so what are we going to do well we're going to have to postpone or put on hold the fix video right so or well, the fixed video series until i can sort out uh you know a, a scope or a logic probe to start looking at that board because really i'm just not going to be able to get that board going so what can i do in the interim well i, I don't want this empty cab sit in this in the theater it's now i've now got it in pieces here uh so i've really forced my own hand here i'm going to have to actually carry on and do the bigger project which was really the transformation transforming it into a jammer cab so that it can eventually be switched and in doing that you know i probably need to take care of a few other little things on the cab as we go through so that is going to be the next video now for this damn cabinet <laughs> i like this cabinet now i'm not so sure uh, so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna have to start doing the transformation so i've got, I've got to wait for the jammer harness i've got a jammer harness coming uh, so we're going to need that to do the wiring but let's have a look at some other things actually i wanted to show you a few things on this cabinet too that i've since discovered so the first thing that's interesting is this marquee. Now this marquee is definitely a release by Leisure Allied Industries because you can see the logo which we saw originally. So it is an official marquee. Now of course, you know, I mean anyone can pull together some graphics I guess. It doesn't have to necessarily be something sanctioned by, by Konami but I'd imagine under the license agreement anything that goes on the cabinets or part of a kit would potentially be approved I don't know but this particular artwork is extremely unique because it's just not shown anywhere on the internet at all there's not another marquee like it anywhere if you've seen one please let me know but what I did find out which I thought was very interesting was that this exact graphic is actually the graphic that's on the manual so it's a sort of a slice out of the graphics that are there and then colored so very curious about the history of that marquee so yeah I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with this marquee regardless um, if I have a jammer pie then it's going to really be a bit of a multi cab so there is another marquee that I would really like to get a hold of and uh, I'll just show you a picture of that now 
and this particular marquee is I think is pretty cool it's sort of generic um, generic Konami uh, marquee now the other thing that uh, I found was interesting if I took took out the controls here and and on the back of the controls my god what is going on here right we have on the player one two three four we've got a leaf switch stuck in here all these other ones they're, they're not even these are not connected it's just like connected through I think all maybe in series with this leaf switch so it doesn't matter if you want to play a one two three four if you've got the right amount of credits you hit the one the first button and it might work I don't know but this shouldn't be wide like this this would not trigger this button at all you know it's got nothing nothing to push it you'd normally have your micro switch or your leaf switch behind that and of course there's nothing there so I don't know guys this is a, this, is a, this seems to be a bit of a bodge a bit of a bodge job you know and the, um, the soldering and stuff is just not it's not good We've got this tape bit at the end here so <laughs> that's that's pretty poor and the buttons themselves well you know I've got every different type of red button there ever was ever made I think on here <laughs> so <laughs> you can see they're like different heights and you know different colors slightly this is a different color red this one there was a newer one here and this one here is a a newer one so i don't know i think i have to change out the buttons as well then i don't know what i'm going to do as a cover for this because this you know again is unique it's not on the internet anywhere very basic graphics as well so you know do i go over that again I'm not sure. Really strange too. Look, even the even the the spacing, like where four players is, it's like hard up against this button. It's not actually in line with the button like the other ones are. It just seems a bit amateur hour. <laughs> so anyway, that was the uh, control panel and some oddities with it. Uh, a couple of other strange things that I found, well not strange things, but just things that I, I noticed. The coin door, I think I did mention that it had been painted, but um, it's not painted in the correct colours. This should be a two-tone sort of hammered grey finish. And it's a different colour on the outside here to the inside. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I mean, it's a little bit rough too. You can sort of, you get in close, you can see, you know, it's gone over the edge here. This should be a yellow segment and you can see they've just sprayed right over it that may need to be sorted out one day it sort of looks okay for the moment i think i'm just going to keep it that way for now definitely i need to clean up these uh, fascias and the wiring in here guys was really bad well you know it's just there's just little things all over the place with this wiring you know look at that just hanging out there that was going into the control so the marquee area there is no light there's no tube the holders are there i don't know if the um the little starter at the back is working but uh, yeah i need to get a tube for that as well if we swing around to the back so in the back here guys as i said i just want to show you this 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 is a dog's breakfast isn't it this is terrible and it's still got you know cables from the the old i think defender set up and as I was saying before, see how none of this is shielded? So any of these could arc across potentially. And then we've got the original, original power supplies there that I now need to check out thoroughly. So I think I'm going to take all of those out of the cabinet. And then I can give this a thorough good clean down the bottom here anyway. So that's required. You know, and other things like there's an earthing cable, two sets of earthing cables here that run up to the uh, connected onto the speaker subframe you know and again that's just all been cut and left there so let's tidy all this up let's get all the power supplies out I need to check the power supplies I may even get the monitor out at some point maybe check out the uh, the monitor the power supply and the PCV eventually but um, at least in the meantime you know I'll get a switching power supply in here um, we'll need the original transformer for the monitor, we'll get the jammer, 
uh, jammer pie in here, we've got a jammer harness, connect it up to the controls, get the controls, you know, looking presentable, and, uh, you know, fix up the coin door lights and the marquee, and that'll be all part of the transformation that's coming up next. So there you have it, we're at the end of another video guys, and look, we didn't get far. We didn't get very far, but we did, we could, you know, test the board, we tested it in another cab. That worked out well, we've got the basis for the transformation to the jammer, so we'll just have to get on and do that. It wasn't the plan for this cabinet, my goodness, this thing is, uh, it's like a chameleon. It's constantly changing. So, uh, but anyway, that's that's the plan now. I'm gonna go full steam ahead, get it done, get a jammer pie in there, and I can even play Hyper uh, Olympic on the jammer pie, even though the high score saves won't save properly. But that damn board doesn't have a battery, so it can't save anyway at the moment. But uh, that's the plan going forward. And then I'll have to get back to what I wanted to get back to, which was the Missile Command. And then, of course, I've got the Sega Blast. And then all the other videos I keep saying I want to do, but I can't get around time to doing. One at a time, we will get into it. But anyway, until then, guys, thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Tell your friends and all that good stuff. And uh, take care. Look after yourselves. Enjoy the hobby. Enjoy your arcade. And until next time, ciao for now. You must continue! You can do it! You are amazing! The theater is now closed.